Okay, hi everyone. In a few minutes, uh, we are about to begin for is all there is finding and sustaining your uh, life uh, purpose. So once more, in a few minutes, we are about to begin for is this all there is finding and sustaining your uh, life uh, purpose and. Please, if you think uh, this live stream is beneficial to someone you know, please invite them to uh, join us. Okay, so once more, good evening, everyone. In addition, we are live in LinkedIn. So to our friends in LinkedIn, good evening, everyone. We are also live in YouTube and in Facebook. Okay, so we encourage everyone to ask uh, questions. So once more, this is not a conversation between our uh, sharer and me, yeah, feel free to ask, uh, to comment down and ask uh, questions. Okay, Ed, joining me this evening, I think she hails all the way from Pampanga. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. I would like to, uh, yeah, introduce to you all Miss Ice Tolentino. Hi, Ice. Hi, John Mark. How are you today? Uh, yeah, so, yep, uh, this is also my first time meeting Ice. Yeah. Not in person, <laughs> but in a, in a computer screen. Virtually. <laughs> yep, uh, probably my first question to Miss Ice is, uh, where are you currently located? Can you share to us? Yes, uh, I'm from Clark, Pampanga, so... Uh, I work at Beyond Limits Outsourcing Solutions, uh, a BPO company uh, here here at Clark. And uh, can you share to us uh, what you're currently uh, doing with uh, Beyond Limits? Yeah, I'm a business development officer at Beyond Limits Outsourcing Solutions. So we cater, uh, we cater. Uh, uh, U.S. clients uh, uh, wow. in various industries. Yeah, we have healthcare, we have accounting, we have estimators, constr uh, constructors uh, con in construction industry. We also have uh, real uh, in real estate. So basically, uh, sa lahat. <laughs> yeah, a lot because of this pandemic. Uh... There's a lot of jobless uh, people, right? Uh, how about in your uh, company? Do you have are your is your business or your company growing uh, more, or how does how did the pandemic affected your company? Yeah, the pandemic affected us in a good way, in a great way, because wow. we are uh, yeah, because we have expanded and grow a lot. We uh, our head count uh, almost doubled from wow. last year. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, a and, good uh, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, and because of that, of course, I think uh, one of the greatest uh, gifts that we can uh, share to a person is a job, right? So yes. yeah, that that's uh, very heartwarming to hear. And yeah, can we ask? Uh, may we know what clients, uh, what what countries uh, your your clients are? From? Yes. Uh, as of uh, as of now, uh, we have a uh, U.S. client uh, U.S. client base, but we can cater uh, every uh, every nation around the globe. So yeah, and uh, almost uh, all industries we can cater them all. Okay. So once more, our uh, topic is finding and sustaining your <laughs> life purpose. If I ask you, have you found your purpose? Uh, yeah, I think yes. <laughs> yeah, because I'm really enjoying what I'm doing right now. And I have a very supportive uh, management team that are on my back. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, yep. Once more, also, uh, shout out to Miss Maricar and uh, to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> To everyone I'm in our car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out to her. So I hope she's watching right now. And yeah, to to learn more about uh find and to find out what our uh purpose is, I would like to uh introduce uh to you all our uh guest sharer. 
So the reason uh, that we have uh, cross, we shared this live stream to our fellow engineers is because our sharer tonight is also an engineer. So specifically, he's a uh, chemical engineer. So we hope uh, you'll be learning a lot. Uh, we'll be learning a lot from him. And yes, he's also uh, an advocate of uh, Toastmasters. So without further ado, uh, good evening and uh, thank you for joining us, Sir Nelson. Thank you for having me and a big fan of your show. Hello, Joe Mark and hello, Ice. Yep. Uh, of course, uh, this is also uh, my first time uh, meeting uh, Nelson. So let's uh, warm things up by asking you what opted uh, you to choose uh, chemical engineering. Well, when I grew up, I was a nerd. I love math. I love science. But I don't want to become a scientist. So I decided to be an engineer. And when I studied the different fields of engineering, I think chemical is the one that's broadest with a lot of applications. And actually, a week later, I'll be giving a talk to my alma mater graduates on chemical engineering. So the concept I had is this. A chemical engineer is the bridge between science and business. So when I heard that concept, wow. I said, okay, chemical engineering, it is. And that's where I had my college course. Yeah, yeah. When I hear about chemical engineering, what comes to my mind is ACS. So <laughs> with regards to business, I remember ACS. So for those who are not familiar with ACS, I think they're the one who's making the happy toothpaste. Am I correct? Alfonso C. Sopetran. So he's also... Uh, a chemical engineer. Yep, uh, I believe. I believe yeah, yeah. ACS <laughs> is into like detergents or soaps. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I forgot the soap, but I think it's Pride, right? Pride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. ice is very conversant with English as well. So, uh, Miss Ice, are you also a Toastmasters? How did you? Uh, you're very. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Very conversant in English. How were you able to develop that uh, conversational? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I'm a, a communication arts uh, graduate. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, I've just mastered this uh, kind of a uh, uh, conversionary uh, talking in English or the English language through the BPO. Yeah, they have they they really yeah they because VPOs has a really good training uh, and coaching through uh, through the usage of the English language yeah yep uh, and I think uh, Nelson knows this that uh, for engineers definitely it's very difficult <laughs> for us to converse in English that is actually the reason why uh, why I joined uh, Toastmasters as well. So can you share to us, uh, Tito Nelson, uh, how did you discover uh, Toastmasters or your, your experiences, your journey with that uh, organization? Well, when I got married, the maid of honor was a Toastmaster. And then she wanted some resource speaker for a club to talk about how to write a book and I had to do it in 10 minutes. And when I was there, remember, I was not yet a member. I was just a guest and a visitor. And I gave my talk 10 minutes for how to write the book. And then I saw the rest of the proceeding and said, wow, I love it. It's a safe environment. For those who are not yet familiar with Toastmasters, it is not just for you to practice public speaking. It's also for you to be given feedback in a very constructive way. And you'll be motivated to sharpen your communication skills and your leadership skills. Yeah, <laughs> actually, one of my uh, most memorable experience with Toastmasters is actually it took me a year. Imagine that it took me a year before I had I had the guts to deliver my my first uh, speech. So that's how uh, frightened or scared am I to public speaking. So imagine that. So that's a very rare 
<laughs> okay, occasion as well. Ganun po ako ka sobrang takot at mahihiyain with regards to uh, public speaking. And yeah, I think uh, by practicing and this live this live stream of ours parang taught me a bit now to be more uh, confident and to be more I think conversational a bit in English. <laughs> uh, That's in addition, true. in addition, uh, Tito Nelson, uh, what club are are you a member of a current club or are you a member of various clubs? I'm just focusing on one club right now. It's called Alpha One. We meet every other Saturday. Uh, do you know any clubs uh, in uh, Pampanga near ICE? No, actually, but I can give a PM to ICE because in the Toastmaster website, there's this page called Find a Club. So ICE, if huh? I, let's say, I'll have your, maybe I'll look for you for your profile and I'll give you a private message. There's a feature about you put in where your location is and I believe the website will tell you these are the clubs near your area. Then you can contact them, visit them. Right now, everything's in Zoom, so you're safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that everything's in Zoom now. <laughs> That would be great, and I look forward. <laughs> and I'll wait uh, for your message. <laughs> all right, then. Yeah, our actually to add, to our, add past, our past a sharer was from Pampanga also. She was a former beauty queen, Casey Reyes. Uh, if you're not familiar, so she's uh, in a Toastmasters club in Pampanga as well. But I forgot the name of her, of her, of her club. Okay. So, yep, uh, I'm going to add in your uh, slides, uh, Tito Nelson, and yeah, let's get to know more about, uh, I think, finding our and sustaining our uh, purpose. So, yep, take it away. All right. Thank you, Joe, Mark, and Ice, and thank you for this opportunity. And hello, everyone. Thank you for sharing your night with us. Now, let's have an umbrella question. How can you make your life count? If you answer this question well, imagine this. You'll be able to wake up every morning with a sense of excitement. In fact, just the previous night, you'll not be able to sleep at all. Why? Because you'll be waiting for the next morning to have your next journey. That's how fun it will be. Another thing, you'll be going to the office excited because you know that it's going to be filled with meaning. And last but not least, and this is the most important, given the pandemic where things can be crumbling around us in terms of health, finances, or career, if you have your life purpose intact, whatever happens to you, you are still okay. You can still be resilient. You can even flourish. That's the power of having your life count. That's the power of knowing your life purpose. Otherwise, You'll be waking up every morning, you know, it's daytime again. When will I be happy? Am I in the right job? What's going to happen to me when I die? Is this all there is? And that's why today we're going to share some insights and a template, hopefully to start in your journey, how to find your life purpose. And towards the end, some thoughts how to sustain it. Because there are many people who are starters, but not finishers. Is this possible? Let's take a look at the real life example. This person is Lalaine de la Cruz. She graduated electrical engineering. Ah, another technical person. Okay, so I'm chemical. Joe Mark, I think, is mechanical design or engineering. And then Lalaine is EE, electrical engineering. She works for this firm called the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines. Basically, it takes in power from the power generators and channels them to the different end users. That's basically the business model. And of course, as you notice, she is a woman in a male-dominated industry. Yeah. She started as a line woman, which is a very dangerous job. I think you all know that. Also, I think Jomar knows that. Imagine there's this high telephone pole or high electrical pole, and it may be fully charged. You have to climb up there and then risk being burned alive or short-circuited but she has to do it to repair a line, a power supply, a power transmission. And she rose from the ranks and she's now one of his chief engineers. And guess what? You would think 
that she would have the opportunity to go to, let's say, Saudi Arabia or go to Canada and earn much more with that profession. But she has no plans of leaving the company and no plans of leaving the country. Why? What's her secret? And in an interview, which I love, this is what she said. From the very start, I already knew that I wanted to give light to the world. I said my mission is to give light to the world by influencing the expanse of my territory in the service of God, men, and my family. My vision is to be the person I'm destined to be and be shaped into the purpose of my calling. From here, we can get a clue how to get the purpose, which will get you accomplishing beyond what will be your normal limitation. Imagine woman, electrical engineer, male-dominated industry, fraught with risks and dangers, and yet she's flourishing. Why? Purpose. But let me give a short detour as to why people have relatively low ideas of their purpose. And by the way, if you're able to go to a dark street like this with bright street lights, you have Lelaine de la Cruz as one of the people to thank for. So now let's have an idea why is it that people, especially young ones, feel kind of lost and they want to have some guidance as to what is life all about. Well, here's the theory. In school, and I think there are some in the audience who are still students, and this is also for you, in school, there's a curriculum. Everything is laid out for you. Okay, so it's step one, two, three. Take up subjects A, B, C. Go through this exam and get those passing grades. Fulfill requirements one, two, three, and then you'll have your diploma. Everything is structured and laid out for you. But after you graduate, when you go into real life, there's no curriculum in life, is there? And you notice, as we've seen, where in school, everything is structured here in life. You're pretty much on your own. You have to figure out what to do, what to decide, where to go. To make it worse, there are many, many choices. And like the diagram will say, instead of one straight road from point A to point B, you have a lot of options, a lot of exits, a lot of detours, a lot of entries, a lot of destinations. What do I do? And that's why many people feel lost. And that's why purpose can be your compass on how to get to your desired destination. That's the power of purpose by which you'll be able to make your life count. Otherwise, you'll be wasting your time. And when you waste your time, you'll be wasting your life. So, therefore, if there's one thing you'd like to take away from this webinar, it is this. Your purpose journey begins with a growing idea of who you are. Let me repeat. Your purpose journey starts with a growing idea of who you are. Remember Lalaine de la Cruz? Who she is, is that she's the light of the world. She's a light bearer. Because of that, she's able to actually do it by being the chief engineer in a company that provides light and power. So how do we do this? This is one of my favorite templates. It's very powerful if you take time to reflect on it. And this is now where we are coming from. A good question is, so what do I do now? But you're actually talking about the life part, wherein people see what you're doing, but they don't know why you're doing it. Then you look deeper, you now say, okay, what do I do now depends on what is my life all about? And that's your purpose. But here comes a deeper question. For you to know what's my life all about, I have to look at who am I, my identity. So many people try to figure out their purpose from outside in, what do I do and therefore who I am? Here, we reverse the sequence. We go inside out. We start with who we are, light of the world. And then our purpose to give light to the nation. Then the life, what do I do? I am a chief engineer in this particular company. Do you see the power of this diagram? Start with who you are. Now, this is the key point. Identity shapes purpose. Identity shapes purpose. If you have a weak identity, it'll make you so absorbed with yourself and you'll be able to max, unable to maximize your life. 
However, if you have great idea of your identity, it leads you to a great purpose and thus a great life. It's that simple. A great identity gives you a great purpose and therefore you'll have a great life. Now, let's give a little bit example here. This is a baker, okay? So, imagine you're a baker and then you'll probably think that, you know, it's the same old job. Every day I will go to work, this bakery, I'll just need some dough. I'll just shove them into the oven, guard the temperature, then take them out and that's it. Day in, day out, day in, day out, same, same. Pandesal, pandesal, pandesal. If you're like that, you'll probably be bored to death. Is this all there is? And not only that, what if you own a bake shop and the pandemic forces you to close down? Does that mean you're a failure as a baker? Does that mean you cease being a baker? But what if you follow the circle and go to your identity? Let me give you a concept. What if instead of saying, I am a baker, you are a nourisher of life? Why? Because in reality, you're not just breaking bread. You're bringing nourishment and nutrients to people. Imagine this particular family having a wonderful breakfast together. And part of the breakfast is a great sandwich. Where did that sandwich come from? It's not going to fall from heaven like manna. It has to be the baker. And that's why when you have healthy families, you'll have happy families. And then when you have a healthy set of families, you'll have a healthy nation. That's the power of the baker. But you have to think macro, not just a baker, but a nourisher of life. And therefore, if that's your identity, you cascade forward to go to your purpose. Imagine the baker will say, my purpose is to help people be happy and healthy through proper food. Imagine the contrast. You are selling people empty calories, junk food, sin products. That's totally different. If, however, you see your mission as giving healthy food with your own hands, that's going to give you an exciting purpose. And not only that, the life can be expanded. The power of a macro view is that you can go beyond what you're doing right now. The obvious application is that today you can be an honest and excellent baker, but let's broaden your horizons. Consistent with your identity, I am a nourisher of life. My purpose is to help people become healthy and happy through good food. And I can do other things like I can mentor young bakers. I can organize feeding programs. And if I'm ambitious enough, why not end world hunger? Why not? That can be your vision. You see now an example how this can be done in any profession. Let's look at several more. A teacher, a school teacher. What is she really doing? She's not just giving lessons on the blackboard or grading papers. She is a shaper of young minds. She is a shaper of the next generation, the next leader of the country. And her purpose is to help prepare the next generation to be productive citizens and leaders. Who knows? One of her students will become the next Philippine president. And therefore, it's not just being the best teacher she can be. She can also say something like this. My real mission is to inspire kids to be the best they can be to reach their potential. Imagine that everyone is a gem. Everyone is a rich treasure of wisdom to come. And the teacher plays a critical role there. She can also have a hand in improving educational system. She can also work with parents, expand her effectiveness. Notice now how we're going to do it from a profession to purpose because of identity. Let me give you another one. I'm a voice for the defenseless. That can be applied to lawyers. Now, I know there's a lot of lawyer jokes out there. Don't get me there. But I need lawyers too. Imagine that if I get sued and I don't know my rights, I'll be taken advantage of and I don't know the law. And then who knows, I'll be convicted, maybe even executed unjustly. I need a good lawyer. And therefore, I'm defenseless on my own. But this person will be my voice, will be my advocate. And the lawyer's purpose is not just to observe the law, administer the law. 
It's also to make sure justice is served. His purpose is to bring a strong community through proper implementation of justice. With a just society, you have a strong society. With justice system, you may have anarchy. And that's the important role of lawyers as well. And so, what will be your application beyond, let's say, just practicing law? Well, aside from being an ethical and skilled lawyer, you can serve pro bono, help the poor, don't charge anything. You can probably even use your skill and network for an advocacy. Let's say you want to combat human trafficking. And you may want to give webinars like this about legal matters, the Compachero system, where people can go to you and you can give them free legal advice. Set them in the right direction. Now, Joe Mark, this is a time where we can take a pause and let's say have a banter. Now it is your turn. Think about your profession. Start with the doing, <coughs> then go to the being. That can be a good starting point. And let's find out who you are. Joe Mark, I'll go out on a limb and I hope you're game. And this actually is a good slide to help you get started. And this is the one. Some suggested identities, and then you may want to choose one. If one of them speaks to you, you may be on your hand to look at purpose. <coughs> so, Joe Mark, let me take a quick interview of you. Joe Mark, what do you do? Uh, our mission is to influence and inspire young ones uh, for them to take up STEM or STEAM related careers in the near future. Great. Now, what is the objective of that advocacy? What's the end product? So what if you inspire those people? Uh, our metrics would be uh, if they became uh, an engineer. So that's uh, one of our uh, greatest achievements. And eventually, they'll be contributing to the growth of our country. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> can you make it into a purpose statement? but not really there. Final about an identity statement. Can you now look at what you do into I am? I am a, so I have an idea, but let me also try to see if you have a better idea. So Joe Mark is I am a blank. Keeping in mind what you do and the end goal. You can choose on one of the words there in the slide. Uh, probably I prefer uh, I am an education evangelist wow that's great okay i am an education evangelist can you complete it a little bit more um, i'm an education evangelist yeah that's a good okay the macro view is there and then do you have a particular niche not really niche it's in the sense of a sort of a focus field uh probably our focus field is we're using cad or design yes. softwares uh to help them out or or to inspire them to have them appreciate uh what stem is okay so maybe it's like this you are an evangelist for stem education can be notice we now make your i am this is a one powerful noun then the following words will be to sort of set direction because if i say i'm an evangelist people may think you are a priest or something but if you say, I'm an evangelist, and I like the choice of words, huh? because it connotes passion. I'm an evangelist for, let's say, STEM education, and that gives you a certain now, a certain brand, because people will see now your passion is not just any education. Anything can be educated, but now your focus is STEM. And it so happened, let's say, one of the things that you do will be the CAD. So I think, John Mark, how does that sound for you? I am an evangelist for STEM education. Yeah, uh, I think I can I can place that uh, sentence or phrase right now in my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> <laughs> your your headline, I think they call it the headline. Yeah, yeah, that's my headline. Uh, that's, that uh, I got that from you, so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, actually, before meeting you, uh, before this webinar, I studied your profile. I also was thinking, what if Joe Mark will say, "I'm a champion for Filipino graduates to become globally competitive." Something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. That's that's good as well. Because I'm in love with, uh, yeah, I'm in love with your, the keyword of global competitiveness and for Filipino graduates. So I'm a champion 
for the Filipino global competitiveness, something like that. It doesn't have to be limited to graduates. It can be any stage, any profession, but in your case, focusing on engineers or technical field. Yeah. So I you have at least two. <laughs> yeah, you have at least two, evangelist and champion. Yeah. So great. Now, notice, Jomar, how does that make you feel? Yeah, uh, yeah. I have heard about this. Uh, I remembered Miss Virginia <laughs> defining what your identity is. And uh, yeah, I am very pleased that it was reinforced uh, by you because, yeah, clearly communicating what your, I think, what your mission, vision is uh, will help you uh, stand out. So it's an, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> It's an aha moment for me because I basically, uh, Sir Tito Nelson and I, I do a lot of things. Uh, not only that, but I'm more uh, passionate with regards uh, to those things. And yeah, we, with that question, it's a really an enlightening and probing, probing question. <laughs> and not not only that, Joe Mark, when you had that aha moment, do you feel pumped? Do you feel oh, it yeah, it's exciting. I can't wait for the next day and the next day and the next day. And my creative juice are doing, how can I do it? Aside from what I'm doing now, let's say CAD, there must be some other way. You, you see the power because it stirs up. Now it harnesses the favorite word of the millennials, passion. So how do you feel? Do you feel pumped? Do you feel excited? Can't wait? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, the reason for LinkedIn local uh Definitely, uh, I, I think some of uh, our participants are aware this is a non-technical thing, right? And uh, this is the reason that uh, we wanted to add more uh, value to our main audience, which are all technical people, because these are some of the things, I think, that are not taught in the school. And uh, these are the things that you will be learning from a guru or or uh, an evangelist like Sir Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's where we can relate because we're all engineers. And I don't know about ICE. ICE, what is your experience? Is it like technical people have difficulty communicating, let's say in business English? How, how, yeah, how does it yeah. work there? <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, uh, I think they have uh, some difficulties in uh, uh, con conversing in English. Because they they are used to like uh, like the engineers the they are used to numbers to measurements and all yeah yeah that is true I have this anecdote wherein you ask an engineer to explain a concept he can explain it in Filipino ask him to explain in English that's where he sort of falters and actually that's one of my advocacies if you look at my LinkedIn profile. My headline is, I help technical people communicate great ideas. So that's the way I would put my purpose there. So that's where now, well, that's one thing which I like also what Joe Mark and you are doing. You're equipping people, whether technical, non-technical, all fields to be better communicators. And that's the purpose of our life here. So thank you very much. And is there anything else before I move on? Yeah, I think uh, Tom Mark will get the, we'll have the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will fit you, Tom Mark. <laughs> because, because to think about, I'm a champion for Filipino global competitors, that's broader. And Tom Mark can go beyond STEM education, whatever that will be. So it can be a subset of your bigger identity or purpose. So I gave you a lot of things to think about. I will not be surprised if Joe Mark will not be able to sleep tonight because he'll be thinking all those ideas. <laughs> okay, so yeah, yeah. if nothing else, oh, by the way, I welcome people who can also suggest some more nouns or identities in the chat box or in the comment section, but let's move on. Okay, now let's dig deeper. So let's do a little bit more structure. Let's have a little bit more fun exploring in what way or what are the factors that will make up your identity that if you have these three things, you have an idea furthermore what your identity is all about. Here are the three, design, passion, and pain. Design will be what do you excel at? Passion 
what value do you love to give? And pain, what do you want to prevent? And so let's look at the first one, design. We know what this is. It is a spoon. Now, what is the purpose of a spoon? Yeah, we know it's something for you to you know, bring food to your mouth, yeah? Now, let's have some fun. What would be the other uses of a spoon? Anyone? And let's say Joe Mark and Ice and people in the chat box. What would be the other creative ways to use a spoon with? Anyone? I think ladies first. <laughs> 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 what well, do you... Aside from, mm, what do you use a, a spoon for, Ice? Yeah, I think I can use it as a little shovel when I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How if you're taking up gardening, <laughs> I'm sorry. How about your mark? <laughs> ice, ice. Yeah, yeah. If you are, ice, if you're taking gardening, you don't have a trowel or a little spade. Use the spoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will surely do. <laughs> okay. All right. I have, so, I, Jomar, anything? Uh, I have someone uh, from Bernie. He's uh, from Bernie. I think Bernie is in Washington. He's saying yeah. uh, he can use the spoon for relay egg race. So. <laughs> you can use it for games. That's true. Yeah. And you'll be happy to imagine the, the game. You have this, uh, this spoon in your mouth and then you... You then have to you put it to the other guy's spoon, and then you probably see the face grimacing. All that. Okay, anything else? Uh, for me, probably I'll be using that uh, to open up my favorite beverage, which is a oh, yeah. of beer. <laughs> or a can. Yeah. Or a can of biscuits, for example. <laughs> anything else? None for now, I think, from our All right. uh, let, audience. <laughs> all right. Let me let me give you some ideas here. And you got it right, some of them. Okay. So I said shovel. Okay. And then uh, Joe Mark said for games. Okay. Party game. Or no, somebody said for party game. And then uh, you'll be surprised. You know, if you women, you forgot your compact, you can use the spoon as a mirror. Ah. So you now have a MacGyver thing. And you'll see, and this will be something like engineers would think about. Spoons can be used for door handles. And then let's say if you're an artistic type, you can use it for some sculpture or some structure there. And guess what? If you're the musical type, you can use two spoons, bang them against each other, create music out of it. Notice what we're doing now. You can see that the spoon has other possible purposes but if you're to interview the inventor of the spoon he'll say what that's not what i intended the spoon to be for this is alien to my intention but it can happen why because of its design now what is the design of a fork it has the same purpose to bring food to your mouth but the design is different in that case for example a spoon you can use it because of the design to bring rice or soup to your mouth. But a fork, you just jab it to a piece of meat, bring it to your mouth. Same purpose, different design. Therefore, you can have two people having different design, but they can work together on the same purpose. One is gifted, let's say, with math. One is gifted with communication, but they can have the same purpose together, like say, build a great company or build products that will be benefiting people it can happen and so here's the first exercise which actually i do not intend to ask the people to do it now if i were to give a workshop this is probably what i'll ask them to do for the next 15 minutes i have workshops for this so the first thing i will let them do is this it's not just theoretical for you to find out your purpose you have to do some reflection and dig down into yourself exercise number one is to make a list of 10 skills that you have. The design speaks of skills. What do you do? What do you excel at? Make at least 10. Why? We'll see it later. The more you can think about, the more chances you can identify your identity and your purpose. 
Now, I have a bonus tip for you. You sit down on yourself, by yourself, and then list down the list. And what you can do is that you interview people who know you best. Your family, your significant other, your boss, your coworkers, your mentor. Ask them, here's my list. What else do you think I'm great at? Then add to the list. Now hold on to the list because we're going to process it later. Now, here comes some bonus tips about your design. It is not static. You can expand your design through study and training. You can fine-tune your design, have more skills, whether it is learned or natural. That's where LinkedIn Local Philippines can help you a lot. And you can also reinvent yourself because when you have new skills, you may have a different shift of your identity and purpose, and then you can have a different kind of life that is just as rewarding. And that's the purpose journey wherein you find out first what are you great at that can be the starting point of finding out who you are. Let's look at the second route, passion. And this is where we usually hear people saying, I want to follow my passion, pursue my passion. Is it good or is it bad? It depends. For the purpose of this talk, we will say the passion is what value do you love to give? What value do you love to give? It's not just passion for passion's sake alone. So, for example, let's have a little thought experiment. Bring out your wallets and bring out 20 pesos. Now imagine, you have two basic options. Option number one, go out there and buy yourself an ice cream cone. Mmm, ooh, I love chocolate. And imagine the summer heat. And when you lick and munch on that ice cream cone, it's like what, I don't know, seven minutes of heaven? And you'll be happy, of course. But suppose I give you an alternative. You take that 20 peso bill and give it to a street kid selling sampagita. And this is what actually my wife Lucy and I would do from time to time. We will be driving to some place and we will be in some street corner. In this particular case, a major intersection in EDSA. And in that intersection, we will always see this little kid. His name is Jack Bird. I asked him. And if you see Jack Bird, he's probably what? I don't know, probably about 10 or 12 years old, short. I mean, his skin under the hot sun, it's so burnt and brown, so grimy, okay? I don't know how it smells like because we're in this air-conditioned car, but he's out there in the polluted air, hot weather, peddling sampaguitas. And what do we do? We would then give Jack Bird a 20 peso bill, which is the worth of his stash or merchandise. And then we will say something like this, keep your sampaguitas. We give you the 20 pesos, then use the sampaguitas to earn 20 pesos more by selling it to some other guy. Credited to Jack Bird, he still insists that we keep the sampaguitas. Sometimes he would even throw the sampaguitas into our car. But now, guess what? We're also happy. But where do you think are we happier? Treating ourselves to ice cream or helping the street kid out there? Of course, the answer will be the latter. And that's where now the passion comes in. When you are doing the right thing because you're passionate about it, then you'll be happy. That's the word the passion comes in. Bonus tip, you do not pursue happiness. You pursue the things, the good things that will lead to happiness as a byproduct. And when you pursue your passion, actually first, pursue your purpose. The passion, the happiness will follow. And what do you mean by passion again? It's what gives you, what drives you to give value to others. You don't need to be pushed or bribe, it's there, it's part of you. For example, some people will say, I have a passion for eating hot dogs. Okay, where's the value there? Well, probably the guy who benefit is the guy who makes and cooks the hot dogs. But I somehow doubt it gives value to your cholesterol level, right? Maybe it can be your passion is, let's say your hobby, collecting stamps, maybe, okay? But I think it's very apparent if your passion is to help people become better versions of themselves, like in the last picture. Your passion is to help people to become better versions of themselves, like Joe Mark. His passion is to help students to become great engineers, 
to be an impactful force to society, not just to their loved ones, to those, but to society as a whole. That's my passion. That's Joe Mark's mission. And no wonder he's excited and he does things like this every single day. That's where now you have the role of passion in purpose. Passion is never static and it's never in a vacuum. So remember the 10 skills in exercise one, which of those skills gives you passion? That's your next round. So you have this laundry list of skills because some of those skills you can do, but you're not exactly excited about it. You can do it, but don't you, you don't see yourself doing it for the rest of your life. But there may be some skills that you love doing it, seeing the value it has been giving to other people. And whatever skill you're passionate about, you will want to improve. So this is my own trademark guide. We call it the Passionate Mastery Matrix. Okay, this is another thing in a workshop we can ask you probably in the next 30 minutes to write down your 10 skills and put them into their respective quadrant. Let's look at the axis, X and Y axis. Engineer again, X and Y axis. Oh boy, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, John Mark can relate. Okay, so in the X axis, it is mastery. From doing it poorly to doing it excellently. The Y axis is passion. From you hate doing it to you love doing it. That's the Y axis. And then each of those 10 skills or more, it's like a little dot. You put them now on a grid or a matrix from mastery and passion. So for example, let's explore the lower left quadrant. It's something, a skill you are lousy at. You suck at it and you hate doing it. No brainer, I'm not going there. That's not where my purpose and identity would be in. Now, what if, let's say, you are in the upper left. You are doing something poorly, but you love doing it. Hmm. Do you remember American Idol? You remember the audition shows? You see those contestants? They are lousy at singing, but they love doing it. And Simon Cowell say, oh, that's so terrible. You can't sing. And guess what? He's doing them a favor. Some of them, believe it or not, they can carry a tune, but they have ambitions. They become the next pop superstar. Don't go there also. Now, this is probably where people most are. It's in the lower right quadrant where you can do something excellently, but you're not exactly a fan. You may be good with numbers, but out of necessity, you have to have a, let's say, accounting job, but your dream is elsewhere. You're a good, decent accountant, but you'd rather be somebody else. That can happen. And that's another discussion altogether. But the sweet spot is in the green upper right quadrant. You are living the dream. You're doing something well, very well. And people look for you, for your talent. People chase you, not you chase them. And you love doing it so much that you cannot believe that people pay you for that. In fact, you may even want to do it for free, but don't tell them. Okay? So our own goal is to be as much as possible to be in the green area. And that is now where you can find your identity and purpose somehow. Here is the way I would do it with my own 10 skills, okay? To show you how it looked like. And so I am lousy at sports, okay? I was a nerd. Remember, I'm an engineer. I love math, right? So you can imagine, boy, I am so, you know, you give me a basketball, the basketball will have a mind of its own. I can do carpentry, but you know, if you want me to build a house, don't be surprised if you'll be like this. Okay, the house is, you know, not exactly level. Now, the other thing is I love to sing, but you know, don't, don't dare me to sing, okay? I will terrify you out of your daylights. I love cartooning, surprise, surprise. When I was young, okay, how did I get to be a good English speaker? I grew up reading DC Comics. I got my English grammar there. And believe it or not, when I was young, I drew my own comic books, but I don't know how to draw. Actually, I sent some samples to DC Comics and the talent search manager said, 
you may want to try out marble. Okay, so therefore, <laughs> there goes that dream. Hey, I would have been another, what, Stan Lee or another Jim Lee, whoever they are, or Jack Kirby. And so guess what? So now I go to the orange part. I can do calculation. Okay? I can do, I love formulas. I love how the numbers fit. But I don't exactly see myself doing it for the rest of my life. I can drive a car, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be a grab driver. But what if, and here's what I found, my sweet spot, the green area. I am getting skillful, more and more skillful in writing, teaching, speaking, and I love to read. And as I do it well, I love doing it more and more. In terms of writing, by the grace of God, I've already published 10 books and two more are here on the way. It's a joy. And it's also a joy for me to teach things like this in this webinar and to speak, to share my thoughts. Later, I'll show you how I can move further from that. But notice the objective of the green area. When I know my passionate mastery, what I do well and what I love doing it, that intersection will allow me to give maximum value to people versus singing, versus sports. But if I concentrate on that green area, I have my purpose and I have the best use of my life. When I will be on my deathbed, there'll be no regrets. That's the power of identity, purpose, and life. Now, you may want to think about this, Joe Mark, and you may want to think, where do you think will be your skills? What will be in the upper green area? You may want to give a guess, Joe Mark. In that green area, what do you think will be the skills there? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, like... take home na lang, take home. Take home. This will be a take home take... exam for me. <laughs> yes, that's true. But notice the power, okay? The power of this, if you do this well, it will filter the way you use your time and money. Because if we have several skills, we can have several things to do with our lives. If we chase so many rabbits, dabble in so many projects, well, guess what? We may not be achieving a lot, but if you know your sweet spot, the green one, you'll be able now to know how to use your time, how to filter, what to prioritize and what to defer or what to take out of your life. And that will also be guiding where you're gonna use your money. Let's say, for example, investing in yourself or investing in your own training or investing in people. So that's the part also of this passionate mastery matrix. When you focus on your sweet spot, the green area, you have this filter, this compass, remember this compass, to make sure that you're living a great life. Now, let's go to the last, the pain route. What do you want to prevent? John Mark, are you a DC person or a marble person? Uh, I grew up with non-DC, but they're more into Dragon <laughs> Ball. And... <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Mga Ball anime? and Transformers. Yeah, yeah, and Transformers. Okay. Uh, G.I. Joe. But I think G.I. Joe and Transformers are not DC nor uh, Marvel, right? I think Transformers and G.I. Joe are under Marvel. Or maybe right now they're into this other company called IDW. They're practically independents. Okay, anyway, let's go to this one. Who is this? Come on. We all I know think, who that I one is. I think Ice mentioned Robin. Please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I think that <laughs> that's Robin. Am I correct? <laughs> oh. All right. No, it's Superman. No, just kidding you. All right. So, what? Okay. For now, here's the fun part. What is Batman's real name? Mark Logan. <laughs> I think Mark Logan. Wait, is that Beast Boy? No, not cannot. Can it cannot be Wolverine? Okay, anybody in the chat box over there, comment section. What is Batman's real name? 
No, but and there's uh, there's I... still need for us. Uh, there's still time for us to Google it, so Mark. <laughs> I think it's Alfred. Alfred. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't see anyone yet commenting. All right. I'll give you the answer, but because there's some even. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Edward Robles said Bruce Wayne. Okay. Then another Thank guy. You. Thank you, Meredith Reyes. Bruce Wayne. Okay. Fantastic. So. Thank you very much. You saved the evening. Now, let me ask these people, maybe some other people. Okay. We know that Batman's true identity, his secret identity is Bruce Wayne. Now, here comes the fun part. Yeah, that's true. Alfred is the butler and Robin is the sidekick. And actually, there are different Robins. Okay, that, let's not go there. Now, how did Bruce Wayne become Batman? Okay, that's the more important question. Okay, so let's take a look at the comments. I will not give the answer right away. What made Bruce Wayne, you know, take up this weird costume? You know, he looks like a flying mammal or flying mouse. What happened in his life that made him Batman? Anybody? Okay, anybody? Luis Ibanez. Do you know how Bruce Wayne became Batman? Meredith? Yeah, because of trauma. Jermar, what's the trauma? What was the trauma? Yep. Yeah, his parents were murdered. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Bernie. All right, now, this is the seminal comic strip. When Bruce Wayne was very young, he and his parents enjoyed a movie together. They went to some alley, and some mugger tried to, you know, steal Martha, the mom's purse, and tried to get his father's wallet. When the father resisted, the mugger shot the guy dead. Then when the woman was hysterical with grief, when the mom was hysterical with grief, the mugger killed her as well. And then the mugger fled. And so therefore, young Bruce Wayne saw the corpses of his dear beloved parents, all bloodied in that dark, deserted alley. They are dead. And because of that, he made a vow, a sacred vow. I'll dedicate my life to avenge my parents' death by fighting crime. Okay? So notice how Bruce Wayne's pain shaped his identity. Bruce Wayne could have been, I am a playboy millionaire. But no, because of that pain, I am the Dark Knight. I am the Cape Crusader. I am the Avenger for justice. I am the protector of the innocent. You see now how his pain shaped his identity? And subtext would be this. He wanted to have other people spared from their pain. He would like to help the innocent, the victim, so that they will not undergo the same pain as he did. We see now how pain can be redeemed, how pain can be a powerful motivator for your identity and purpose if you know how to handle it well. And so we also have examples left and right. Here are the two. I don't know if you know the name Natasha Goldblum, wherein she's this beautiful woman you see here, very intelligent. She has a promising career in New York City, fashion design, I think. But because of a medical condition, she was depressed. And at one time, she overdosed. And people think it was suicide. The mom... Jean Goldblum was so devastated. That was her pain. But then she used that pain for a new identity and purpose. She set up the Natasha Goldblum Foundation where the purpose is to educate people about mental health and for suicide prevention. Now, the other one is Samaritana. Now, notice, the pain does not have to be yours. Samaritana is a ministry for sex workers. Mean to say the founder Samaritana saw the plight of the sex worker. She herself is not a sex worker, but she saw their pain. She saw how they were abused and exploited, bad self-image. So she started this ministry where she and her staff would go to the streets of Ermita, befriend them, invite them to their homes or offices, and slowly take them out of the trade and then give them skills for alternative livelihood and give them counseling and help to build up their damaged personalities. 
That's their mission. That's their purpose. So you see now how pain can be also a powerful determinant in shaping your identity. I am the dark knight. I am the rescuer of these exploited women. I'm an advocate for mental health. I am the preventer. I'm the rescuer of those who would have taken their own lives. That's the power of pain. And so now, here is a very good quotation by this guy, Friedrich Beuchner. The place God calls you is the place where your deep gladness, your passion, remember, and the world's deep hunger, the pain, meet. And from there, you'll be able to find your sweet spot, so to speak. And there you find your identity. Here is an exercise which we also allow you to do it at home. And let's say we put it together. Notice we try to make it, okay, in your search for your identity and your purpose, you can do it intuitively, okay? You can do it aha moment, I'm like this, okay? Or you can do it a little bit more systematically, not to say that intuition is wrong. We try to do it both sides. So exercise number three, you may want to go through these questions. This is not fixed. You can have your own questions or play around with the sequence. Number one, in the pain part, if you look around you, what deep hungers do you see? Do you see people crying in hunger, squalling poverty, you know, thinking that I wish they can be better educated? Or is it like, I wish that I can be their nourisher of life? Because you can see those thin, starving, malnourished kids out there. What deep hungers do you see around you? The second one, which one calls you out the most? The world is full of hunger, actually. But you have to choose probably one or at most two. Just choose one. You cannot be everyone. You cannot meet everyone's pain. You will burn out. Focus on one where it talks to your passion. And that's where number three. Why this one? Why, let's say, hunger versus human trafficking? Why engineering and not, let's say, arts? That sort of thing. Number four. What do you want to prevent? In Batman's case, he wants to prevent a death of another mugger. And he wants to prevent, let's say, the world being invaded by aliens because he's joining Justice League, spending some time with Wonder Woman, maybe. Or number five, what value do you long to give to others? It's related because now this will be the positive part of number four. Number four is what pain do you want to prevent? And therefore, put it in a positive way. What do you want things to happen instead? The positive version of it. And number six, what will be your passion masteries? What skill do you have that you do so well, that you love doing it, that can be so fit in that particular need, particular value, particular hunger? And then from there, you can craft a rough draft of your identity. How would you describe yourself, the first draft? Quick bonus is that the first draft can always be refined, can always be revised, sharpened as you can have more and more clarity as to what you want to do with your life. Let me give you an example so you see how it looks like. Here's how I did it. So what deep hungers do I see around me? I have a heart for young people. I used to be young, okay? And then young people, I see them struggling with career, with relationships, spiritual issues, emotional, financial, other issues, especially in light of this pandemic. But you'll see also there are many people with many kinds of problems. I cannot serve them all. I may be Batman, but I'm not Superman. And so what I chose, this is the one that speaks to me the most. It is career. There are many people needing some tips, strategies, guidance about career. And like Joe Mark's mission, how do I help this person have the best possible career as an engineer, as a technician, something else? Okay, now, and why this one also? What is my pain? Well, I have made a lot of mistakes in my own life, in my own career. And therefore, I want to prevent people from making that same mistake or similar mistake in their lives. Think of it this way. I am nearing retirement, so I'm probably about 30 years ahead of the millennial or maybe even let's say the upcoming Gen Z. So in my past 30 years, I learned a lot which I could impart to you guys for your next 30 years. That's the concept. 
So what do you want to prevent? They won't make the same mistakes that will probably derail their career, jeopardize their happiness, and factually lose sight of their life's purpose. And what value do I long to give? That I want them to be knowing their place. What am I supposed to do? Why am I here on earth? How can I give value to other people? What is their place in the sun? And to know it earlier, succeed faster, be a lot happier, and be a positive influence to others, to have that impact on society. And that's what I long to give to people. And so what are my passion masteries? Well, as I said, I'm good in writing. What is the evidence? I have 10 books, three of them about career. Let me show you some of them. For example, this is my first one about career. This one is your first job. And this is the one which talks about how to have, let's say, if you're a fresh graduate, how to get your first job, especially if the market is tough. There are lots of tips here, which I will share probably in another time. The other one, the second one is this one, your career roadmap. Okay, your career roadmap. Because this is the one, by the grace of God, I had a column at the Philippine Star in their career guide section where I have a column where I give advice or I respond to people's letters like Dear Abby. And this will be the best of that column, the compilation. Last but not least, this is the last one, the latest one so far. And this is the one about soaring high. It's think of it as making a flight plan. You're, in, you're a pilot. You're a pilot of your own career. How do you navigate your way from the runway to the heights and back to the runway, okay? And then not only that, if let us say you are driven by regret because there are many people, not just young people, who think, if only I would chosen this other course or if only I had not been turned down by this employer, if only I have not resigned, if only I had studied harder. But you know, regret is one of the main enemies of purpose. The more you have your weak identity because of your regrets, the more you'll be crippled, you'll be unable to find your life purpose. This book may help because this is the book called Regret No More. It also carries my own journey about overcoming regrets of your past. Let me give the audience a free tip based on this book. I love giving this tip. Tip is this. You create a peace treaty with yourself, okay? Regret is like this enemy that keeps on hounding you and hounding you. You are no good. What kind of person are you? Boy, you're so dumb. If only you have done this, you had been, you know, superstar. But you now have, oh, hold on. Let's have a cessation of hostilities. Let's have a treaty. Stop doing it. And I will stop listening to you. And because of that, the next time regret is beginning to whisper, oh, 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 oh. remember that peace treaty? I don't have to listen to you. Stop. And then because of that, you'll be in a position where you can be you can be at peace with your past. So that is now exactly how I'm able to, to give value to people. Okay, and therefore that's the one we're in. I have this particular writing skill. The evidence will be the books, okay? Later on, I'm gonna talk about another book for millennials and boomers, how they can relate with each other. And I can speak. And that's why I invest in myself in Toastmasters. And I can also teach and train. So these are my passion masteries. Without that, I will not be able to write one book, let alone 10. And because of that, that's the value I give to people. And the thing is, even after I die, they're still around. They're my legacy. And then I can die happy. I live my purpose. And the evidence will be in the people's life that I touch. And so how would I describe myself? I see myself as a guide to future business leaders. Joe Mark is the evangelist or the champion. Ice can be like the trainer for communications, the empowered person. I myself, I see myself as a guide. Remember, my past 30 years, whatever I learned, what works, what does not work, what maybe work, I'll give it to you so that in your, your next 30 years, your learning curve will be faster, you'll make less mistakes, you'll be happier and be more successful earlier. You're welcome. Okay, now let me go to the next slide. So you now have an idea how to have these things together. You have your identity. For that, you look at your jigsaw puzzle. What am I good at? Your design, 
your passion masteries, your passion also, what keeps you going, even though you don't have to be paid for it. And then last but not least, what is the pain point that may be in you or others that will also give you the added oomph to have your purpose? We are in the home stretch because I like to end this with a few ideas how to sustain your purpose. This can be another talk altogether, but I don't want to stretch it too much because what I talk about finding your purpose, that's only half the topic. So I'll go to the second half quickly. There are many starters, but few finishers. Why? It's not enough to know you have a purpose. It's also know how to sustain it, have this ecosystem, this support system, this environment where all the more you can have chances to fulfill your purpose. And here it is. Imagine, you know, it's like planet Earth. Okay. So it's an ecosystem. And I like to give four. In my book, which I'll show you later, I have several. But here, for this purpose, I have the top four. The first one is wisdom. If you want to live your life with great purpose, you must also have great wisdom. Many times when I talk to young people, one of the things I ask, who or what are your sources of wisdom? Who do you turn to when you need advice, especially for earth-shaking, life-changing issues? Who is that person that you utterly trust so that if they say, jump, all it takes now is how high? You need wisdom. Let me give you a story of somebody who would have a great purpose, but because lack of wisdom, it ruined him. I have a friend. His purpose is this. Do you know OFWs? And of course, there'll be OFWs outside the country who are in need of legal assistance. So this guy had a brilliant idea. His purpose is this. I'm going to be bringing legal advice to these people, fellow Filipinos, who need legal help in other countries. So he thinks, I'll turn it into a business. I'll monetize it. If these become regular clients, I'll charge them legal fees and I get some part of it. But there's a twist. By definition, that guy has to bring lawyers to, let's say, Hong Kong or Bahrain or to, let's say, France. And that means you need air tickets. You need funding. So what did this guy do? He made a deal with this travel agent. And the travel agent said, OK, I'll advance to you the airline tickets. You can pay me three months later. When your business succeeds, pay me back. And that's the concept. So the guy, my friend, brought in a bunch of lawyers at that travel agent's expense, bring them to this particular place in the country. They give them free legal advice, et cetera, et cetera. The business is supposed to grow. It did not. And now what happened? The travel agent got into trouble because he advanced the money to the airline. And now when that guy sued my friend, my friend was, you know, it's a great purpose, but no wisdom. Wisdom would dictate, no, 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 no. Don't be in debt first. But because he was too much into his passion, no wisdom, he ended up in shame and bankruptcy. And guess what? He's still being sued. Wow. And that's where a cautionary tale. Do you want to have a great life? based on great wisdom, find out your sources of wisdom, trusted mentors, trusted friends, good books, and of course, the Lord. And that's where now you want to have a great life, seek wisdom. Wisdom can be the new currency aside from time and talent. The second one is network, and that's the power of LinkedIn. I love network. That's why I love LinkedIn. And I'm glad Joe Mark and Ice and other people, they share their passion for LinkedIn. Because remember, the passion of LinkedIn is to give value to the LinkedIn people, okay? Followers, networking, opportunities for new job, opportunities to share great ideas. And that's where now network is your other thing. If you want to have a great life because of a great purpose, because of a great identity. Why? Nobody fulfills his purpose alone. I doubt it. Even Jesus Christ needed his 12 disciples. And by the way, one of them was Judas. And so you will need to have your own network. Do not skim on that particular angle. You're going to need them. I will not go through it further, but you need at least three kinds of network. And you would have to have these three to sustain yourself, the ecosystem. 
The first one will be your soul nourishing network. Those that nourish your soul. Those that love you whether you succeed or fail. Those who cheer you on and who can also help you when things are tough. The soul nourishing network. Your family, your friends. The second will be your strategic network. Your purpose may need people for donations, logistics, connections. If you want to talk to this mayor, who's your network? If you want to be like Tony Meloto, you want to ask this CEO for help in making the next God Kalinga, what's your connection? And so strategic network will be those wherein they will give you access to resources, competencies or time or funding you would need for your purpose. If your purpose is to build a foundation, who would be your donors? If you want to have people going to Mindanao for some mission, who will provide the transport? That particular network you will need. Last but not least, the supporting network. This will be the day-to-day. -day. This will be the ones who are going to the admin side, those who make the phone calls, those who keep the paperwork ongoing, those who chase the permits, those who follow up this and that. So you need also those people doing the grunt work. So three, you need three. The soul nourishing network, the personal ones, the strategic network, the ones of influence and power resources. And not only that, your support network, the one for the day-to-day -day routine. Because purpose can be so routine. The danger is that you'll be so bored, you may give up. But that's why you need to have something to keep you going, and that's passion and have people to help you with. The third one is self-care, of course, because you, can be, you cannot live on your purpose if you are, you know, dying, you have allergies, you have, you know, diabetes, hypertension, but you need to take good care of yourself. You know, when I was writing this book, the book that is where in this is going to be the, the basis of this talk, is this all there is? You know, I almost had a stroke here because I was working very, very hard for this. I had also, what? I was also working on two other books. And because of that, I was losing sleep. I was not eating well. I was stressing also my wife out. And then I had my heart palpitations. And, and then I was feeling dizzy. And for a while, I fought and got away six feet under. And that's why I learned my lesson. I may have a great purpose, let's say writing books to guide people. But if I'm going to be six feet under, that's no use. So self-care is very important for you guys who want to pursue a great life. Stay healthy, stay mentally strong, and keep in touch with this one, spirituality. Have you noticed that people who have a great belief in God, they seem to be the toughest. They seem to be the one that has the most faith to go along. And they are having this strong conviction that God is on their side. And no matter what happens, God will see them through. Spirituality. And here's one real reason why spiritual belief is very important. Look at this one again. The greatest identity is based on something transcendental, not temporal. And what else can be more transcendental than God himself? Let me paraphrase it. Have you noticed the 20 peso bill? Do you remember? I can use it for myself, the ice cream. Or I can give it to somebody else and make him happy and I make myself happy. Purpose, a great purpose, is one where you live beyond yourself. And the more beyond, the better. And what can be more beyond than God himself? And you see it here in the lane, actually. You see it at the start. Notice here, by influencing the spans of my territory in the service of God. And remember also what I said earlier, the place where God gives you the most happiness, also where the one the world's hunger meets. There's the spiritual element which we can afford to ignore. I'm not so sure what is your religion, your faith. Just remember, having spirituality also helps a lot. Final tips about your purpose. We're already on home stretch. Okay? We're already on home stretch. And let's say here, don't despair if you still feel lost. You know, if you feel a bit lost, here's my book. This is my first one. I'll give you a little story about myself. I used to be a country manager for a top 500 firm. Because of an economic crisis, I was retrenched. 
And boy, that shattered my identity. My identity was I am a high-level executive. But when I lost my job, my identity was shattered. And I lost my purpose. I felt shame. And it was like this for two long years. My job hunting was unsuccessful. Maybe I should go to LinkedIn earlier. And because of that, my savings went down to zero. My self-esteem went down to negative until I had to find out a new identity. And that's where I had to become. I am a child of God. When that happened, I began to slowly rebuild my self-esteem. God loves me and he provided and provided. And guess what? He gave me in due time a brand new job. During that time, I was journaling and journaling, and it became this book, Finding Comfort. And so if you're looking also for some guidance, if you feel disappointed, lonely, loveless, this book can be for you. So you see now how I mastered my writing to have 10 books, and you'll see how it's supposed to leave a legacy to the world, helping them with their relationship issues, career issues, emotional issues. And then that's where now you begin to slowly and surely begin to know yourself. And your purpose is a process. I didn't go through this overnight. It took me years to be where I am now. Here's the other tip. Don't go through the journey alone. Remember the network. As you get older and wiser, your identity can even change and evolve. Your purpose can change. Don't panic if you say that, I thought my purpose is like this, but it's not like this. Did I get it wrong? No, 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 no. It may be that your purpose is evolving something better, richer, and your life will be even more wonderful. Where do we go from here? Well, do the exercises. You now have seen exercise one. Make a list of the 10 skills that you have. Exercise two, put them into the passionate mastery matrix. And number three, put them into their respective series of questions that will lead you towards making a draft draft of your identity. And then read this book. This is the book we're in this web base. Okay, is this all there is? It's based, it's published by Anvil. Anvil is the publishing arm of National Bookstore. Okay, and if you go to my website, it's I'll show it to you later. You'll find a word to order the book. It's also available in ebook version. Now, I am in LinkedIn, of course, and that's where I really, really welcome your feedback. And you will notice like this. If you follow me on LinkedIn, every Monday and Wednesday, I would post articles. Let me repeat. Every Monday, I would write something inspirational, something instructive to help you start the week right in your workplace. On Wednesday, I try to be a little technical. I try to do a little insight about problem solving, sometimes in a setting of a factory, but you can apply it anywhere. Okay? And from time to time, I will have special articles like a book review at the end of every month. Please follow me and share whatever I wrote down. Spread the blessings. And that's where you can help me and you can help Jomar, Ice, and other people who are in the in a mission using this wonderful platform called LinkedIn and be a blessing to the world. And then here's my website. It is www.nelsontd.com. If you go to the books page, you'll find all my 10 books with two more along the way, where to order, how to order. It can be delivered by the way. Everything's online anyway. And also my talks and I have my blogs. And last but not least, this is what I talk about. I have an upcoming book. This will be released. Actually, it's already released. Okay. And it can be ordered. Okay. It can be ordered right now in these links, which you see. Okay. You can have the hard copy. They're giving out the they're giving out soon the soft copy link. But basically, this like this. We talk about career. And I don't know how, let's say, Joe Mark and I's their experience is, but do you find it interesting? A boomer boss and a millennial employee, or a millennial boss and a boomer employee can be, or a boomer parent telling his millennial kid. Why are you into gig economy? Don't you want a steady eight to five job? Hello, security. And the boomer will say, whatever, because I'm into flexibility. This book will tackle that issue. Aside from career, there's also mental health, social media, 
Relationships and yes, spirituality. This will be a in very interesting book, I promise you. So check it out. Last but not least, we'll see you in a journey. Feel free to contact me through my email, nelsontd.com at gmail.com. I'm also in LinkedIn. You can message me. And we'll see each other in the journey. Jomar, I'm done. And we can do a Q&A. Let's keep the conversation rolling. Thank you, Jomar and Ice, for this opportunity. Now let's continue to give value to your audience. Jomar, take it away. Okay. <laughs> Once more, thank you so much, uh, Sir Nelson. And uh, definitely, uh, yeah, I was given an assignment to think about probably for a week <laughs> for me to contemplate. How about you, I? How about you, Ice? What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think so. I I I have an assignment. <laughs> we have a homework. <laughs> <laughs> But it's going to be worth your while, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that too, because I've listed some. <laughs> okay, so once more, uh, we are going back to our question and answer uh, portion. Do you have any question, Ice? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have one. <laughs> okay. Go. So, uh, so, Sir Nelson, you've mentioned regret. Do you have any? And what is your biggest regret? Mm. My regret is that I wish I had exercised my people skills earlier. Like I said, I was a nerd. Okay. When I was a nerd, all I care about are the books, the formula. I was insecure. I was not confident in dealing with people. And I had to be in manufacturing. And so I sort of hit with r and I tried a little bit of the shift work. And yes, I got to have a little bit skill. But had I had that skill way before college, during college, Africa, I think I would have gone further. That trajectory would be different. So like I said, I think you'll agree. Many people, not just engineers, they need to have that mastery of the soft skill. My regret is that I wish I could be a people person earlier and better. And I have this knack of, let's say, motivating people, doing collaboration. And that's where maybe my career would be a lot different now. I'm not saying I'm unhappy. I'm happy with them now. But I think it could have been better. And that's my that's my regret. And I think that's where we can help each other in terms of the soft skill. Nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, another question is from Sir Bernie. Uh, if you could change one thing and have one advice for your 25-year-old self. What would it be? Oh, that's great. That's a great advice. I would give myself this advice. You have to think strategically. I came from a generation. I don't know if you guys know such people. My parents are the kind of, just have a good job. And that's okay. At our time, we never had access to career counseling, career mapping, career pathing. So it's not like, you just go have a job. You get well paid, you're not a bum, it's okay. But you know, concepts like career advancement, moving up the ladder, and therefore maximizing who you are. So that then the more power and money you have, you can help other people. That thing I would have to give to myself. Nelson, it's not enough to have a job, to have something, food on the table. Think strategically how you can make your career better so that then you can be a better influence to other people. Nice, nice. Uh, another question uh, for engineers who are poor communicators, what are uh, your top two actions uh, that they should uh, take today? Well, two things. Number one, they can go to Toastmasters, okay, because they will train you how to do public speaking. And by the way, when you do public speaking, you have to write down your speech. So therefore, it's also written communication. The other thing is that, well, you can get in touch with me and hopefully we can organize a workshop together about, let's say, writing and speaking. So, you know, my details are in LinkedIn. So if you're interested, let's organize a Zoom, a training thing about do's and don'ts, how to speak and also how to write. Because I've seen, okay, I run two factories, okay? So this is the one which you'll see also in my profile. 
And I have direct reports. Bless their hearts. They are very good people. But when you see the way they write down their emails, I had to, you know, sometimes I had to edit this, you know, the subject verb agreement, that sort of thing. But that's different. The thing about also getting to the point, what is it that you really want? How to persuade your audience, especially when we have to also convince our senior management to spend 40 million pesos in capex, that is the test. So that's where we need to also improve our communication skills. Those masters, perhaps I can help you also somewhere along the journey. And that's where now we need to have the improvement. Imagine this, engineers and even BPO, whoever they are in other industries, the more higher level you're in, the more demanding the job will be that require communications. Imagine it's one thing to make a procurement for a piece of ball pen versus you're up there. You have to convince your big bosses, give me 40 million pesos to buy this new technology. <laughs> That's another ball game altogether. And also I can help people write books as well. That's why I volunteered to you, Ice and Joe Mark. Uh, let me know how I can help. I can help people write their books, especially also, by the way, Books are precious by which you can preserve your wisdom for other people to come. Imagine you'll be able to reach people you've never otherwise meet and go places where you not otherwise go. That's the power of books. Okay, so uh, how about you, Ice? Uh, if you'll be writing a book, do you have any title in mind? Yeah, I've actually written a book for Beyond Limits. Wow. Yeah, Great. <laughs> it's entitled uh, A Glimpse on Philippines Business Process Outsourcing. So it's basically, uh, uh, it's all about uh, BPO industry in the Philippines, since it's one of the uh, 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 one who gives a higher, uh, uh, who contributes a lot in the, in the economy of the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ice, it's I have fun. a question really for you. <laughs> it is fun. It is fun. There's a satisfaction having the books. We call them our children. Ice, if there's one book that you really, really, really want to write, that you will not be able to sleep until you put it on paper, what would that book be? My Adventures. Because I love traveling. Wow. I love, yeah. Wow. I love, great. Uh, I love uh, exploring other cultures, uh, 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 other traditions. Yeah. I really love getting lost in other <laughs> countries. Or <laughs> okay. Yeah. Aisa, invite us to the book launch. Huh? Ah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I will. <laughs> <laughs> John Mark, Jomar? what would be the book <laughs> yeah. you would like to write? John Mark, what about you? Mm, that's not yet in my mind because I'm already right now. I'm contracted to write a book. The problem is, yeah, I, I'm having difficulty juggling my uh, time with that because I'm also creating tons of. It's also a book, right? But it's it's a video, so I'm creating on video courses uh, right now. But uh, yeah, hoping to finish that book because my deadline for that is. Before this year ends, and I think uh, yeah. if I was not, if I were not be able to fulfill that, they will not pay me. <laughs> so that's the challenge there. So well, uh, hoping to finish do, that one. Yeah, what you can do is that whatever material you use for your video, write it down, transcribe it or something, put a little bit more flavor to it. And that's your book. That's how other people do it. They give talks, and then they transcribe it. Polish it a bit more. That's your book. Yeah, and I think there's a big uh, difference with uh, with creating an, a video course uh, from book, and it's really uh, a great uh, a great change and transition uh, for me uh, to adapt. So it feels like if I created a, an online course, it would take me around uh, a week. As quick as that. While uh, while in a book, I think I'll be probably doing that uh, within a year. So, what's your th what's your take on that, Nelson and Ice? It's fun. It's fun let, writing a let book. Let Ice go first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun writing a book, yeah. especially when you, when it's uh, it is your passion. It is what uh, 
like the topic that you want to write is the one that you really love most it, it is it is easier than you thought yeah if you're passionate about the topic the book practically writes itself like i said it's something that you can't wait but to go back to your desktop and write and write and write if you're in a state of flow and you pace yourself that's one of the secret uh one last tip is this eh? if you are going to write a book if you're an all four people will think you're an all four ready that's the other power of having books mm. uh, how about you uh tito nelson uh how much uh, of your daily time do you uh, dedicate to writing your books you have a specific uh allotted time every day I usually work best on Saturday mornings. So I take a chunk. Some people, they write a few pages every day. That's one paradigm. Some people have to do one time, big time. So it depends on your personality. In my case, it is Saturday mornings. Okay. <laughs> and yep, uh, we are still open for questions. Yeah, I have one what? more here. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, so uh, do you think that uh, in finding your purpose in life uh, means uh, something should be sacrificed then? Because uh, some, uh, sometimes, uh, it, sometimes uh, some people have their jobs, but it's not really their passion. But it's where they have, the, the, uh, they have, their, uh, they have the higher income for, uh, to sustain their family. However, it's not their passion. That is yeah, true, yeah. and that, that's true. John Mark, you'd like to talk about that first before yeah, I answer? I agree. Yeah, I agree with uh, Ice. That's a good question. I know a lot of people also who are uh, in that uh, same position as well. So, yeah, thanks for asking that, Ice. That is true. And let me give you my thought. There will be times wherein you have this, I'll rather have, I'll rather have, I'll rather have. You are in your day job. I would rather have this other job, this other thing to do. And that sort of, you know, dissipates your, your in energy and you'll be thinking, I wish I'll be in another place. And so there are several ways to skin that cat. It would depend, again, what is your life purpose and try to frame your existing job to that purpose. If, let us say, for now, it is the season to master a skill which your job can do for you, even though you don't like the job can be the skill, hard skill, or can be the soft skill of perseverance, of being receptive. That's one way. It's another thing of thinking in terms of seasons. This is the season where I have to provide for my family first. But in due time, I'm also developing my character so that I can also turn that into a story or a credential later one day. I've been through this pain. And now that I've gone to a better career path, I can share with you what I did and help you in your transition from this not so interesting job to the one you want. Last but not least, you may want to do two things. One is that you continue with your bread and butter job and you pursue your passion, your purpose on your other free time, the side hustle thing. Last but not least, eventually, it's a matter of choice. If you will be able to choose to love the job you have, I think that will also be helpful a lot. You choose to love something or someone why not see the good sides of your current job and therefore that ideal state maybe later later but for now this is the thing that god has placed me in spirituality remember and i choose to love this job give my very best as i pursue excellence i pursue joy and when that who knows another purpose will take shape nice nice yeah i agree i totally agree <laughs> yeah because i i really yeah. love my job now because it, it really gives a purpose and i i really have a passion about it so yeah i'm happy totally happy <laughs> sweet yeah, happy, spot happy to, yep happy to hear happy to see uh, eyes always smiling and happy <laughs> yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yep. Uh, once more, we are open for questions, and yeah, uh, if you have, okay, here's another one, uh, Edward. How will you encourage the new generation 
Yeah, th- I think this this one is important to come to a habit of reading books since they have lesser patience to reading lengthy article, articles, let alone read the entire book for their own benefit. <laughs> okay, my best advice is to start small. <laughs> you don't read War and Peace all in one chunk. No? <laughs> so you simply, okay, you first have to find the book or article that you really, 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 really want to read, the motivation will take care of itself. And if you really love the book, before you know it, you're reading the whole thing. If, let's say, something that's sort of, you you have to read it, but it's somewhat, you know, it's tedious, it's long, chop it down. Give yourself a break every few, wait, page or two. So the way I would do it is that if that's your difficulty, chop it down, chop it down, chop it down. I do that also. I, I have several books that I don't read in one shot. Surprise, surprise. I would then actually read one chapter a night, for example, and then after that, here comes the thing. You also have to spend some time to reflect on what you read. So I have this book, for example, that will be, let's say, 30 chapters. I don't read everything in that one night or one day. I schedule it, let's say, one chapter a night. And even then, if it, let's say, one third or one half a chapter, it's okay. I forgive myself. If it's a personal reading thing, then... I'd rather finish a book in, let's say, a longer time rather than starting but not finishing. But the key is this. Every single time you finish a chapter, you back up and then you digest. You get the key point and think about how will I be able to apply this in my own life. Okay, so I'd rather master one small chapter and practice it to death rather than read 30 chapters and nothing is nothing happens to my life. I would say also, you're free actually to look at educational videos which can be now about what blog levels three minutes five minutes tops it's okay and like i said reading a book is also dependent on if it interests you what's in it for you choose the book or topic you love to read and forgive yourself if you can read it in one shot slow and steady is better than nothing Okay, so yep. Uh, once more, we are open for yeah, comments and suggestions. And <coughs> announcement: uh, If you have a message or an advocacy to share, uh, inviting you or inviting someone you know uh, to be our next sharer, like uh, Sir Nelson, to link in local Philippines uh, live Metro South. So again, if you have a message or an advocacy to share, do not keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, sharing is caring, inviting you to be our next sharer, like uh, <coughs> Sir Nelson. Yep. And yes. And, and if you share your advocacy, you're sharing your purpose. And that's where you can have more and more people joining you. And together, you can change the world. Uh, let me also, I saw a remark in, I think, Facebook. Uh, if I can be writing more about this, follow through this topic in my future post, the answer is yes. I'll be glad to write more about this so people who are more interested in this topic uh, follow me on facebook and linkedin and my website uh, also follow me and share so that we continue to have this discussion going this will be not the last yeah. time i'm going to talk about or write about purpose okay yep uh once more inviting everyone uh if you have questions with regards to outsourcing uh, please do connect with uh, Miss Ice uh, Tolentino. Also to yes. our friends, to our yes. friends in uh, who are uh, into digital or creativity, inviting you to join us in Digital Creatives uh, Philippines. Yes, uh, please join us. We are uh, in Facebook and <coughs> we are also in LinkedIn, carrying the same name. Okay, Ed. I think uh, it would be better if ICE uh, would uh, be talking more about uh, our upcoming event, which is outsourcing and more. Take it away, ICE. Yeah, thank you so much, Joe Mark. So we will be having a, a, a webinar series. 
It's called Outsourcing and More. So it, it will be presented by Go Beyond Limits Outsourcing Solutions. It will be on May 11th, uh, 13, 18, and 20, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So yes, um, we have uh, our guest speakers, Carney Kim, Ms. Marika Hernandez, our CEO, and of course, me. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, it will be a four, uh, four days of uh, webinar session. Uh, its scope is all about outsourcing all uh, all the industries that we have yeah so uh this is a free webinar session so take advantage of it and uh we will also be giving away a free copy of our ebook like i've said uh a while ago a glimpse on uh, philippines business outsourcing so to all attendees and uh, uh audiences and also uh you can also avail our free uh, business assessment for you and your company. Uh, everything is absolutely free. Okay. Thank you so much, awesome. Shomar. Yep, yep. Uh, and our our next sharer, uh, I think this uh, coming Saturday is uh, Bernie Floresca. So I think he's uh, currently based in Chicago, Illinois. So I, uh, I think his topic is uh, graduate to hired. So once more, uh, this will benefit our uh, dearest students, career shifters, and new, uh, new, new, new grads, newly grads. So yep, uh, please stay tuned for that. And yes, of course, let's continue this conversation and discussion. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. Inviting everyone to please connect to... Tito Nelson to Sir Nelson, and yeah, feel free to ask him uh, anything and uh, to follow up with regards to the exercises you have uh, <coughs> shared to us uh, a while ago. So, okay. John Mark, be ready for our homework, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, once more, uh, Sir Nelson, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay, so yep, uh, once more, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Grabe, no? It's already 10.30 in the evening, and I'm happy. And uh, yeah, it's really heartwarming that you are still there, no? Grabe pala. Maybe we should move the time slot pala to, ano, no? Na mas gabi. <laughs> the, the, the young generation nowadays are uh, Tito Nelson are still awake eh? I think at 3 a.m. Eh? Uh, when I'm checking yeah, my, my Facebook we have that graveyard shift <laughs> yeah 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 and also the young ones yes. uh, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that trend so and uh, yeah it's proven right now uh, there's a lot of uh, people still, still uh, with us even though it's already 10.30 <laughs> in the uh evening okay yep. uh, and so, joe mark yep, uh, joe mark yep joe mark thank you also i'm sure also you have your own share of sleep this night but it's a great thing that you're doing you're making a great impact to your fellow filipinos engineers who knows what's going to happen so thank you again joe mark and ice and i look forward to seeing you enjoying the fruits of your advocacy thank you again Yep, uh, thank you so much, uh, Tito Nelson and Ice. And yeah, see you, see you all. Please connect with us in LinkedIn. Yep, and uh, see you on our uh, next uh, LinkedIn Local uh, Philippines Metro South Live. Goodbye, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Good night, Good night everyone. Stay safe. Good night. Goodbye. Stay thank safe. You. Thank you. <laughs> Stay safe.